welcome to death row. Like we always do about this time. <laughs> I'm gonna fight your fucking ass. You don't got your playing touch butt with that dork in the park. Ah, uh, there's a little snake in the grass. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. No fucking Jesus, people. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. Hey, pussy, are you still there? I back. Who the fuck is that guy? Break out the red panties. Well, rich baby. I would like to introduce. Welcome to the MMA for Money show episode 28. We made a promise. We kept the promise. We said we were going to keep going regardless of if a UFC event was going on or fights were going on to give you guys content to listen to. Well, we are here. I am your favorite garbage man, Bob Voss, at MMA State of Mind, all those wonderful titles of which I hold. I'm here with Don't Cope Just Win on Twitter, Mike Copenhaver. Mike, how are you doing in these times? Uh, I'm doing a good man, just trying to take care of my family the best that I can and just getting my uh, vegetable and fruit garden going uh, a little bit bigger than normal. I always grow every year, so I just uh, want to prepare for that and then uh, getting the Mary J going as well. And uh, other just odds and ends, I got some three little chickens, little chicks for my first time, so we could have eggs down the road and just, uh, you know, trying to waste time while uh, we were all quarantined. And we are absolutely going to get more into that later on because obviously this is a different kind of show. We're not coming off of a UFC event. There's not a UFC event this weekend. We are going to touch on some UFC and we're going to get some feedback from you guys on how you want us to handle the next couple weeks in terms of fight coverage. But we're also going to have two little new segments, at least for the foreseeable future, provide you guys give them good feedback and you enjoy them. We're going to do a little COVID corner, basically how... This is affecting me and Mike on the day-to-day. It's also partly a little get-to-know-your-host in that regard. Uh, We're going to do Mike's survival guide as well. I have a few things that I have done to make these times a little bit easier on me and mine, but uh, Mike has way more knowledge in that regard, and I know he has plenty of tips for you guys to do the same for you. But before we get into all of that, let's go with what we are here to talk about and will likely talk about in some regards for the next several weeks until it happens, provided it happens. You know what? I'm thinking it's going to happen. Uh, UFC 249 is happening. That's the news reel. Per an Instagram Live interview with Kevin Aoli, Dana White says that the UFC will start holding events again, starting with UFC 249 on April 8th. Tony Ferguson and Khabib Nurmagomedov will fight for the lightweight title at a closed event with no fans. From that interview, the only other real info we got out of that is that it's going to be a full fight card, not just a single title fight. And the location is known to Dana White, but he's not telling just quite yet. So, Mike, how does that news make you feel? Uh, It makes me super excited to know that hopefully there'll be some UFC in the future. I know that uh, they need to make money and there's no way that they could just keep this going for uh, this long without any fights. So I really, really hope that it goes through. We've been wanting Khabib and Tony for so long. We've been screwed so many times. It's just crazy that this is happening right now when, I mean, they've been canceled two, three times or more. And now we're on the verge of possibly happening again and it may never happen. And if it doesn't, man, it's going to be crazy. So I really... Really hope that Dana White comes through with that location and it's in Russia or wherever and in a dungeon or cave and whatever and these guys get going. I'm going to quick read through what the fight card is supposed to be. Obviously, likely this is not going to be in the U.S. or if it is, they're going to get a special dispensation for it to be uh, at the Apex. Although the NSAC was supposed to have a meeting on the 23rd, I believe, not the 25th, it's either the 23rd or 25th, to discuss when they were going to start holding fights again because originally the initial stall was to the 25th of March but then they canceled that meeting so it's kind of open-ended when they're going to reconvene and figure that out but if these fights can happen this is what we're looking for I'm just going to do the do the whole fight cards but just like the names on it so Jari Eubanks fighting Sarah Maras Ben Rothwell fighting John Vellante Lyman Good is fighting Belil Muhammad. That's going to be a good fight. Uh, Jacare is fighting Uriah Hall. Jeremy Stevens is fighting Kelvin Cater. Islam Makhachev is fighting Alexander Hernandez. Ayan Kudalaba is doing the rematch of the awkward possum fight with Magomed and Goliath. Uh, Jessica Andraj is fighting Rose Namajunas in the co-main event. 
likely for a number number one contenders fight at 115. Khabib Nurmagomedov would be fighting Tony Ferguson. Obviously, that's the one we've been waiting for. It's the one that's been canceled. And if memory serves, this would be the fifth time they would be making this fight as unbelievable as that sounds. But I'm hoping this happens. I can't imagine this won't be a big deal. Uh, pay-per-view wise given the gap uh, it's always been my opinion that the UFC should do like two fight cards a month one pay-per-view one free card with a week gap in between to like build up towards the pay-per-view with how many fighters they have they can't quite pull that off Um, of the ones I listed are there any of those matchups that really pop out to you Mike other than Khabib versus Tony because obviously we're all waiting on Khabib versus Tony yeah, right off the top of my head, I mean, Rose versus Andrade seems like some fun. Yeah, I, you never know what you're going to get with Rose coming in there mentally, and that shoot that could be pretty exciting, especially going over an enemy territory and um, in the sense of it's not home for her. So I, that would be pretty cool. I really agree. That's going to be a good one. Honestly, it's up and down just seems like a really exciting card. Lots of finishes. Sometimes you could always tell when those matchups present themselves. Oh, obviously, some sloppy ones could be in there too, but uh, it looks like a great fight card. If they can keep even half of that, it's a good fight card. And I do, do really, really hope it happens. Uh, if it's not going to be in the U.S., like we've talked about in the past in our private chats, and even on here, I believe, whether it be possibly in uh, Dubai or Russia, and I know. We, that Khabib went to finish his camp up in Russia, which pretty much secures the fact that the fight's not going to be in the U.S. because I'm not sure if they're going to let him back in after leaving the country. Mike, if you had to take a guess, we'll take the U.S. off the table. I know we've talked about it in this past, but more time gives more thoughts. Where do you think this fight is going to take place? Somewhere in Russia, uh, Dagestan, somewhere uh, friendly that has that doesn't seem to be having very many cases of COVID, so that that would be a great place. It's, I mean, the cold, <clears throat> the cold setting usually doesn't harbor germs and stuff like that. That's why the hospitals and stuff are really cold. So maybe the the cold environment over in Russia will help that. I don't, I don't know, man. I, it better be somewhere fun. I don't want to completely beat UFC 249 over the head over the course of this show because obviously we'll be touching it in some capacity up until that fight happens if that is indeed the first fight card back so we are going to leave that as is for now now we're going to move in to since it is the news of the day and we can't really skip over it especially because it's somewhat invaded every aspect of everybody's life I'm calling this little section COVID Corner Now, we're going to break down a couple different aspects of our lives. We'll go one at a time here on how it's affecting, how things are going for us. So it's basically how is the virus affecting your everyday life? So I'll do the different sections. So, Mike, I'll do one for you, then one for me, and we'll go back and forth a couple times here just to give an overview and and also the fans get to know us a little bit better. So, Mike, how is the virus affecting your everyday in terms of work? Well, I work uh, for Local 44 in Hollywood. Uh, We're carpenter prop makers. We build all the sets basically for the movies, Netflix, and so forth. So uh, they called us all off of the job site over, it was like last Thursday, and told everyone basically to go home and pack up. And I knew that uh, it was going to be big if they were telling us all to stop uh, production. Some some were filming, and they stopped them in the middle of it. Uh, Stars as big as Meryl Streep and Nicole Kidman got halted. Uh, so they sent us uh, home. Luckily, I'm in uh, the union and they you know, take care of us and we automatically get max uh, unemployment at uh, time of being laid off. But not others are, so, are quite so lucky. I'm also lucky that my lady uh, runs a bank and she's really fortunate to be working still and bringing in income. So it's just been really weird. It's, it's just totally halted um, our way of life over here in California because Hollywood is kind of runs in the heart of, of this. Hollywood is the heart of California. And so much goes on through that. And so with not working over there, I've just been doing so much at home. So it's just been really weird. There's just been way too much dormant time. Yeah, My life has gone in terms of work somewhat normal, but somewhat not normal. Uh, for those who can't tell by my kitschy name and all that, I am a garbage man. Uh, we have a small family garbage company pretty much within the cornfields. Um, I am still working every day. Uh, obviously things are changing at work with places shutting down we've done our best to try to call up as many of the restaurants and different type places that have been dealing with a slowdown seeing if they want to lessen their service so they're not getting hit with crazy bills that they don't need that they 
can't really being affording right now and extra service for those who need it there like the grocery stores that are getting flooded um been taking extra pros protocols because obviously i'm dealing with trash um where i've been working in the entire county there's only been one positive case so and not even anywhere really near where i work but still still somewhat out there but uh just trying to be a little bit more careful about what i do touch even though i do wear gloves things fall I use a shovel not with my hand don't touch with my hands and then uh the cdc put out a protocol for people in my job area and uh I had been doing this beforehand, but it even more solidifies it is when I get home, uh, I take off my work clothes in the garage and I just go straight into the shower before I go around my kids or my wife. Uh, kids are obviously off of school, so it's there around a little bit extra and trying to help out do all the online learning and stuff with that. But uh, in terms of work, it's just been a little, it's not overly uh, anxious, uh, anxiety inducing, but just that low level of you don't know because it takes up to like 10 days or whatever to find out if you've been infected. So for all I know, I have been. Um, I'm doubting it, but obviously, you don't know for sure. So, not to get too morbid, but I got I got a positive outlook. I'm a pretty healthy guy in in general. So, moving on uh, to the our little next section of our COVID corner. Uh, how's the virus affecting you in your everyday life for your family, Mike? Well, I have a, a two two year old boy, two and three months, two years and three months old, and it's affecting uh, the fact that like he wants to go play, he wants to go to the park and uh, play with other children. And, uh, you know, we're not going to the park every time we go in the car. He, he's disappointed that we're not ending up at the park, going to the slide and the swings. So it's really sad to see him affected by it because he, he doesn't really understand what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm just so tired of being inside the damn house, dude. I have a four bedroom house with a pool and a huge backyard. And I, I literally, bro, I'm so tired of being here, dude. I'm, I'm going stir crazy. It's definitely going to ca it's causing like irritability in the sense of our me and my lady's relationship. Um, you know, just cause like, I want to go out and do stuff, man. I mean, uh, we, we didn't work this hard to get this life to not go out to a steak dinner or go out to the beach and go have a few drinks. And it's just, it's just, it's weird, man. Uh, I, I'm certainly just, like I said, just tired of it. And I'm sure everyone else is personally well, with the family. I'm doing pretty good with it. Honestly, like I said, the being able to go to work is really helpful to give some sense of normalcy. Um, my wife's job uh, involves like putting on events for kids and uh, with where she does that it's still up in the air if she is or is not working because it's only like a like a 10 hour a week type deal anyway and she's still kind of doing stuff for it so we won't she was supposed to have a meeting tail into last week but the person got pulled out of the meeting so never found out if she is or is not still technically working but uh my son's doing good. My son actually really likes uh, his own alone personal time anyway. So he's doing just fine. Occasionally he gets a little sick of his uh, younger sister, but for the most part, he's doing fine. My daughter is much more the uh, social extrovert who wants to be around people. So it's a little bit trickier for her. So it's been a little bit more like giving her more attention than you probably would even normally need to just so she feels seen and all that jazz. Um, a lot of the school stuff for the online stuff has fallen on my wife, so she's been fairly busy with that. So I've just been trying to do as much as I can when I do get home uh, to help out in that regard. Uh, me and her are doing pretty good, though, for the most part. Just the normal level of occasional fights, as all married couples do. Um, and then I was just telling Mike tonight, actually for the first time, I had a five-person Google Hangout meet with my side of the family because it's one of my sister's birthdays today and uh we had four we had five families like my my folks one of my sisters and her husband and their three kids my other sister her husband and their one kid and my, my other sister whose birthday it was and her husband all on the videos at the same time which is basically organized chaos of people talking non-stop over each other which eventually gave my dad a headache because he's not used to dealing with that level of computers which was uh, entertaining on my side I'll give him crap for that about about that at work tomorrow but just obviously very much out of the realm I mean she lives in DC anyway so we wouldn't be like seeing her but just the not seeing of the family by now we would have seen way more family including my wife's family oh and I, I'm not sure if I've said on this podcast before um, this is my first time telling Mike this my in-laws did make it in from Mexico they got home on uh for last Friday, originally they weren't, weren't going to come in until into April, and then they hurried it up to last weekend, and then they were actually able to hurry it up even more, which is good that they did that because uh, Illinois pretty much shut a lot of stuff down as of last Saturday. That's when we got our 
like shelter in house order was Saturday at like five. So they were able to get going and get in safe, which was where we were originally going to meet them over in Mexico. But obviously that's not going on. So that's obviously a major, major minus on the family front for me because that was a our big vacation of the year. But uh, obviously this stuff is a lot, a lot of down stuff, but we're going to get to the bright stuff towards the end, I promise. Um, so our final thing on the COVID corner before we move on to more entertaining and more knowledgeable stuff in our next segment is... How has the virus affected your life socially? So, Mike, how has the virus affected your life socially? Well, I love the barbecue, and it's just there's no barbecues going down every weekend. We usually get together with our in-laws every Sunday, and, you know, they are they still come every once in a while, but not as much. And so it's it's gatherings, man. I mean, I love people. I mean, there's nothing more important to me than my friends and family. I absolutely love, love barbecuing and cooking. I love making people happy through food. And so it's it's really put a detriment on what I love to do. So it's just it's making me a little bit less happy in the sense of I, I can't make others happy. So it makes me unhappy. And I just I just cannot wait to get to the warm weather, the barbecues over here in California, man. It's it's basically spring over here soon. And I just I want it to be Cali time. And Mike's not kidding about the barbecue thing. He sends me videos and pictures of just the utterly amazing food that he cooks on the barbecue and I haven't even experienced it and just like I, I'm missing it just from seeing the pictures man like it's it's to that degree on that side uh for us socially my family and everything like that uh the only big thing it ever that it really affected was we were just gonna have just happened to have we were gonna have a meetup uh at our place with uh the guy who's the best man in my wedding He's been my best friend for a long long time we're not that good about talking not just in the typical guy way of we don't work together so we don't talk all the time but every once in a while it almost seems to be like within, the, within a day or two of each other we realize man it's been too long since we've seen each other it's probably been about like it's October I think when we hung out his uh, him and his wife and his uh, little boy were going to come over uh, last Thursday we are going to get pizza and have him come over and just have a good time but obviously that, that, got, that plug got pulled but uh, in terms of socially this time of year honestly uh, we have a tendency uh, our household have a tendency to incorporate our own version of social distancing because obviously this is the flu season anyway and we have a tendency to just kind of hunker in for like a month or two not going out too much just try to keep the kids from getting sick if they haven't gotten sick by that point just to like kind of ride it out until the warm weather comes then bounce right back into it so before everybody gets really really blue and depressed and down and all that stuff I'm going to quick pop back into because I realize behind the velvet curtain, me and Mike have tried recording this earlier uh, and didn't quite have that good of situation. So I realize we haven't gone through our poll that we currently have up on Twitter. So we'll jump back to that before we go to Mike's survival guide. Um, We have a poll going up right now on the MMA for Money show main Twitter account. Me and Mike uh, retweet those out if you follow either one of us. And it's, have how have you been dealing with the hiatus in fights? We have four options there. One's watching old fights. Two is boozing. Three is fighting on Twitter. And four is all of the above. Mike, which one of those categories do you fall into during this uh, quarantine life we're in? I would probably fall into fighting on Twitter, if anything. I haven't really been watching too many uh, combat fight or any fights at all, any old videos or anything. I I have a good, such a good memory bank of all the fights since we've been watching so long that you can reminisce about them pretty easily. And I just I want new stuff, man. I want new action. I like to have stuff to keep me busy, stuff for the fans, so we can have bets going. And so I I just I really, really cannot wait till we have some live MMA betting again every weekend or every other weekend or whatever it is and just get our lives all back to normal because I I really am fiending for some MMA and it's just ridiculous because we just had a big hiatus before we even got back to this. Yeah, we were just getting on that uh, UFC had just started up a schedule of being like, I don't know, like 12 weeks in a row or something crazy like that before. Yeah, we got the impromptu hiatus there. Uh, I probably lean on the uh, watching old fights section. I haven't watched a ton. I've watched a few, um, just some of my favorites and a few of the ones from recent fight cards that like I feel like I didn't remember properly uh, given like some of our last podcasts I was talking about like going back and listening I'm like I, I mean I must not I'm misremembering certain things so I've gone back and rewatched a few of the more recent events and some of the undercard that I missed so if you want to count those as old fights um, the boozing definitely not because since I am working and working on the truck I don't drink during the week because 
two thirty rolls around real early and just one extra drink at night makes it really hard to get up there in the morning. Uh, yeah, fighting on I'm, Twitter, I've been I'm, avoiding that. <laughs> I'm from California, so there's just a lot of medicinal Mary J that goes on. I'm not gonna say what happens. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I would say is fair. That's finally, finally uh, legal here in Illinois. We've actually, me and my wife have joked that as my dad used to be heavily into that back in the 70s, um, <laughs> we joke that it's his birthday at the end, a, end of April and we're going to get him a whole ton. <laughs> oh, nice, dude. I need to send him some pictures when I get them flowering. He'll love them. Yeah, he'll be, because he's, see, he's turning 62. And so he's probably got, he's been about 32 years sober at the moment. So. Oh, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> well, he stopped after we were all born and then, because uh, oh, it okay. wasn't Makes legal sense. here in really any aspect. So I've joked about that, uh, especially when he retires, I'm just going to get him like a huge like gift basket full of them and then like a golf cart to drive around in. And the combination of those two things will awesome. be a nice ease into retirement. But uh, obviously, uh, uh, vote on our Twitter poll. We put a couple up throughout the week uh, we like hearing from you guys obviously comment our direct messages are always open like i said i'm not on twitter all the time but i always check my mentions and my direct messages and if i if you're on there i will reply there's there's no way around that so going into a little bit more lighthearted, but honestly stuff that's just going to make your day better our next segment which is probably going to be our longest segment just because i know how much info we have there uh before we cinch things up a little bit later on is mike's survival guide uh in this new segment mike will be sharing some survival skills and tips during this quarantine uh pandemic uh we will give out a few each week and discuss up until this craziness passes and the ufc goes back to uh parentheses business as usual yes i said parentheses business as usual because i realize you guys can't see me and every time dana white talks about it in any interview they always put the parentheses around business as usual so i am trying to keep that as going and quick pause i realized i never said who was winning that poll that's still going on but as of right now currently boozing is winning so apparently you guys following next by uh watching old fights and some party animals there about a quarter of you are just doing all the above so kudos to you guys um so mike we're just going to start going right from you i know you had talked about that you're getting your uh vegetable and fruit garden going but you had told me that you have that going inside how do you have that set up at your place um, in my indoor grow room, I have uh, for my seedlings and stuff that I'm starting, I have a, just I think it's a 60 watt LED uh, light that will get them started for the first uh, basically like week or two. And then I have 2000 watt uh, Mars LED, Mars Hydro LEDs that can get uh, the other guys going completely through the grow or flower. And then I, a lot of the times I'll take them from inside and then bring them outside for when the last frost is. Ours in California was March 17th this year. So we got, we get 12 hours light cycle now. Uh, you can go on the website and look up uh, when your, what the, your light cycle is in your area. It's always preferred after the last frost. And when you get a 12 hour light cycle so that the, the veg grow part of the process can have a, a it's, I guess, the full desired effects and, and time of growing before it flowers. And the reason stuff like the reason we're going into this stuff, especially if you guys have the capacity to do this, the space and all that kind of stuff is something like this you control and something like this little food shortage here, you're not going to be freaking out as much as everybody. Granted, a lot of the stores, at least by me, have started to re-catch up. They've done some limited hours, but they've been able to re-catch up on a lot of the things that are missing uh, from the shelves. But this just relieves that kind of anxiety and helps calm you down and know that you're set, at least enough to take the edge off of a lot of that stuff. Now, Mike, I also you had said also that you got some chicks to get some eggs going. Now... I have told Mike about this. I've been trying to sell my wife on a chicken coop for about five years. When we were first uh, looking for our place that we live at now, one of the places we looked at actually had like a space and like a built up one. I'm like, hon, we live out here. We could have one. And uh, one of the guys I work with, because I work a little bit more out. I live in the suburbs, work out in the country, hang out in the city. It's kind of like this little triangle I got going on. But out where I work, he's got a big old chicken coop and gives eggs every once in a while. But I've been... Really wanting to get that going for the longest time. I don't know if I'll be able to here, but so tell us more about that. You, uh, you said you got three chicks coming this week. Yeah, I actually just picked them up today. I, I custom ordered. Um, <clears throat> they're called Buff Orpingtons, and they're just one of the most friendly, docile chickens uh, of the 
of chickens and they also lay the, a lot of eggs per year it's over 190 eggs per hen per year so just uh, they they're very plentiful and very good with the children so i with my, having kids i really want them to be cool and they're going to be family members so i'm just stoked to uh, you know have th three uh, hens and i'll get you get you basically every other day they lay so you get about three eggs every other day so it gets six in those six days so not too bad well absolutely and then after you get it down pat you could always add more and just see how all that goes and you show uh, show me a picture of uh, your setup as it's starting to get put together it looks pretty awesome um a few things i have done i know this is probably too late for some of this stuff, but when all the craziness first started happening and everyone buying up toilet paper and all that craziness, um, one of the key things uh, that we have always done, and we did it more as a budgeting thing than anything, was we had uh, those Amazon subscription orders that you can get once a month so that it just comes automatic and we had toilet paper and all this stuff coming automatically. The simple household stuff that you don't even think about, that you run low on, you figure out about how often you're doing it. And actually we joke, uh, my wife calls it the toilet paper miracle. We were on our last package of toilet paper. Well, so nine rolls, but last package. And uh, la this past Monday, we were supposed to get our shipment. It was when all of our once a month stuff was supposed to come. It usually comes mid month. And, for some reason, it said that the toilet paper was going to come on Monday. And this was when, if you went on Amazon, you couldn't buy toilet paper. It's all unavailable. And it happened to come on Friday. We, now we were running out, but then we got our whole box full of 27 more rolls. So, But uh, that's nice because I've, I've kind of figured out that Amazon, they hold true to those. And if they won't, they will cancel the subscription, but they'll cancel it early. Like we've had a coffee or thing that got canceled. But for the most part, that stuff stays in there and that just makes that part easy uh, buying Everyone was going for canned food, but like go for those dried beans, dried rice, stuff like that. It's even more cheaper. As long as you're willing to deal with the hassle of actually cooking it, you end up with a ton more of it and uh, actually saves a lot better. And I mean, Mike's way ahead of getting the chicken coop, but even like eggs, if they're available, are real cheap, real easy source of food. Get that stuff going and buying off cuts of meat. I mean, we, we've always done that to save money. I've been bothering Mike for a random Mike's much more of a cook between the two of us I've bothered him for recipes for odd cuts of meat in the past and probably will in the future because save money and that's the stuff that's lingering because no one knows how to cook it you're not gonna be able to find ground beef or ground chicken or chicken breast for a while but you can find yourself some chicken thighs some drumsticks pretty dang easy and a few other things a little beef liver all that awesome craziness that tastes so good <laughs> uh, Mike other than the uh, chicken coop which obviously takes a little bit of construction, and although actually the the what you told me about the garden, the like the fruit garden and the vegetable garden, that sounds pretty easy to set up, provided they get the equipment, which I would assume is still readily available on Amazon. So that's not really stuff that people are going out and buying. What other uh, let's say give you let's say two more tips that you would like to give people to just kind of ease the anxiety going into the scarce mindset that everyone's got going on. Yeah, well, uh, with growing, uh, I guess the most important thing that I ever learned was uh, how to give nutrients, um, whether it's a tomato plant or a Mary J plant. It's just having really good nutrients. And I trust the line of nutrients. It's called Advanced Nutrients Line. They have uh, plenty of stuff and they'll have a, a simple grow and then you'll have a micro and then you'll have a, a bloom for uh, flowering. And so, like, you know, a plant goes through cycles. It goes through uh, the grow, which is all called vegging. And that's when it doesn't have any flowers and no fruits going to be produced. So the plant desires a certain nutrients, certain nutrients at that time. And they've already advanced nutrient line has already figured out exactly what nutrients they, they want during that veg process. So it's pretty simple. You, you just, you know, you buy their grow, their micro and their, their bloom. And what, what, depending on what time, um, what stage the plant is at you just literally you take like a dropper and you it's like two two ml at most into a gallon of water and you feed that to your plant i cannot tell you uh you know just using advanced nutrients and getting like a fox farms it's a it's a special soil it's a really really good one with a bunch of good additives and nutrients in it fox farm soil and uh, a simple grow and bloom just adding that to your growing uh, regimen will, will literally make your your uh, plants like five times more plentiful. I mean, I'm not talking about miracle grow garbage and I'm not talking about miracle grow potting soil. I'm talking about real deal growing from a seed. If you want to do it, it's, it's really not that hard if you just put a little bit of time and love into it, especially if someone teaches you properly. And uh, I, I just most importantly is the nutrients is getting some good grow and bloom nutrients 
and getting some good soil to start out your process. Otherwise, I mean, I don't even know why you're going to do anything if you're not trying to get great results. Mike, thank you for that info. Sorry, I was digesting uh, everything you said, thinking about it. Uh, anybody that's interested, like in more specifics, like if you're not like furiously trying to write stuff down right now, if this is something that interests you, obviously reach out to Mike. He'll pass that info along to you and man, get that stuff going. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do that in because I'm, you might guys might learn this eventually when we switch to full video, but I'm just trying to think about uh, given the stuff Mike has said, I think I might be able to pull that off in our unfinished part of our basement here. There's, it's decently wide and obviously has the power to run some of those lights and everything like that. It's, it stays pretty cool in here, so you probably have to heat it a little bit, but yeah, the, I don't know. The, Looking just around, the six, got, got a lot of room in here. <laughs> just the 60 watt LED, uh, like I have under my 60 watt LED right now, my simple is like 60 bucks or 40 bucks on Amazon or Home Depot. I have um, like eight Roma tomato seeds going, eight cherry tomatoes, four cucumber plants, two zucchinis, two artichokes. They're, they're, it's going to get them strong enough to the point where we, it, once the frost leaves outside, you, then you put them in the pots and let them just rejoice, especially when you give them the good nutrients and soil. I mean, I, I literally, when I first started growing when I was 18, well, I started growing herb when I was like 14, 15, but when I really started to learn when I was 18, 19, I tried to do hydroponics and I failed miserably. It was just too much and too complicated. I, I just love soil anyways. So I still actually grow indoors with soil. So if people think it's hydroponics, it's not. You can literally have soil in a pot under a light indoors. Just you want to keep your environment clean. I mean, I, I do have a dope setup with an AC infinity fan and carbon filter system. Um, I've spent money to, to have. I mean, it, it's because I love doing it. So, I mean, but you don't need all that. You can you can literally just have that light LED light, start your seedlings and get some d good dirt and nutrients and get those things out in some pots outside and be growing yourself, you know, tons of tomatoes, cucumbers and just beautiful things. And just watching the plant grow is just amazing. I was like, cause we, I don't know how we ended up with it. I think it was a gift. We have like a super cheapy uh, light like that, but much smaller scale. And we did it because we, uh, one thing we've always grown is, uh, herbs for our food in the summertime and like just grow tons of them. And yeah, uh, same use, concept. Yeah. Yeah. Use those for cooking. And that's what we started doing is transplanting some of them inside in the winter in a couple pots we have in there. And we started using that light when we need be and it's worked great. So that's kind of, I was making all that silence. I was making the link between those two things. Um, now moving on from the survival guide, which we will go back to because obviously we will have space to fill um we're gonna have a little on-air discussion between me and mike here to try to figure out what we should do in the next couple weeks leading up to 249 letting you guys in on that conversation because i think that would be interesting i've seen some people go back and redo rewatch and rediscuss ufc one i've seen people choosing a random event from the past i know our boy benny abs who i guested on his show uh, a few weeks back, he's going through a few pride events. It's like all that stuff is super interesting. Is that something that you guys would be into? Me and Mike picking an event and going through. Like Mike, how would you like us to fill these next few weeks to entertain these people that have given us so much? Man, I mean, it really, it's just whatever they want to hear, man. I mean, I, I, I've had such a crazy life you know, growing up with my brother, War Machine, and my dad dying since I was nine. He was an LAPD officer, and I, I've had so many crazy things happen, you know, throughout life. That if you wanted stories about my crazy brother and I growing up or something I wish that we didn't do or, I mean, it, it could be anything, man. I mean, it, I'm down to talk about old pride fights. Obviously, they're amazing. Um, I just... I, I I have a hard time just going back with old stuff, man. I I just I almost rather discuss uh, the pos like the possibility of new stuff or just the relevancy of what's happening today that would help the help the fans or the people, you know. Because I don't know, everyone's different, going through something different. But I know that I'm bored and I need content and I love to listen to certain people's opinions. And if we can give them whatever they want, we'll gladly do that. So if you message us or answer the poll, we'll try to give you the best the uh, you know product we can well what we could do i got a couple options here uh one of them were you ever at uh any of your brother's ufc fights like in person yeah uh the j-rock when he when he won first j-rock and got the fight of the night and knockout of the night performance which was epic and i was arguing up in the stands with uh j-rock's brother-in-law and we almost got in a fight ourselves and then uh when he was when he got choked out by yushi Yuka, yoshida at the mgm shit sucked well, if you want, we could do what we could do is you can pick 
uh, whichever of those fights you want, we could rewatch that event. Then we can talk about that and then talk about your experiences being at the event for your brother because that's such a unique experience. And just for one of the shows, obviously. And then uh, then another option for other ones is... Yes, yeah, I know what good. Got, We yeah, could do the, the Tough 26 finale. Tough that, J-Rock, that J-Rock fight was tough, amazing. Tough 6 finale? Yeah, Tough 6, sorry. Yeah, retard. No worries. So let me quick write that down. We'll, we'll get more specifics, guys. Obviously, this is on air. We're letting you into this. But, like... That's some kind of content that we can give you that no one else can give you is not only can we we'll pick an old fight, which some people are doing. We'll highlight some of the careers that went on in that event and where they went after that. But obviously, Mike has the interesting viewpoint of being there watching his brother and just seeing what led up to that, what happened after that. He's let you guys in a little bit with some stories here and there, but we can go way more in depth in that. And that could be a good chunk of the next show. Like we could be the full, like half of it could be the breakdown of said event. The other half could be Mike's view and experience on that event. Another thing I've thought about doing, and I know this got a little bit of traction when we tried to put a poll out there on what you guys would like to see. That one didn't get as much traffic as most of our polls do, but was people were interested in a um, weight class breakdown, like go through everyone. We've done it a little bit in past shows. Like we did it at our year end show, but go through the top, let's say 10, give a little bit of breakdown of each fighters. If they have fights coming up and do a little bit of fantasy matchmaker in each one. Cause with that, we could break out probably, we could probably do like four weight classes in ep- an episode and that's if we stretch it a little bit so we might be able to fit even more and that's an option going forward because we we have right now if it happens on the 18th we have like three weeks or so maybe more maybe four weeks no i think it's three weeks of content to give you guys but i like that idea of going through tough six so we will come up with exact schedule for things going beyond that but as of right now anyone listening to the sound of my voice and we will put out this information on twitter what we are planning on doing for next episode episode 29 is we are going to go through the tough six finale we're going to break down a good chunk of those fights we're going to i'm going to read you all the results we're going to go through some key matchups especially guys that went somewhere after the fact like became somethings um guys with big names and then we'll be able to give mike's first hand account of everything that happened leading up to it during and then the aftermath and i think there'll be a nice look at you guys and obviously if other info comes up we'll go with that there so i really like that idea for that and we will shoot that out on twitter and remind you guys of that coming up because Obviously, this is going to be more entertaining for you if you watch this too. So go back to Fight Pass if you got it or other websites if you got them. And if you don't, DM people who know stuff. (laughs) And you'll get to watch that fight card and we will go over that. So, Mike, before we move on and do a little bit of wrap-up, do you have anything else to say to our fans, to the people, before we break for seven days? No, I just uh, appreciate all you guys listening always, and uh, we just can't wait to get some more MMA content going back for you guys, but we're just trying our best to fill in some time and give you guys something to talk about and listen to. Um, You know, we're talking about stuff that's super relevant. I mean, growing, there's nothing more important as a human than being able to grow food for yourself, and so if you love that type of stuff, you give me, just tell me about it, and we'll we'll give you some um, advice. And I'll give you some more advanced nutrient tips, um, certain uh, types of advanced nutrients that I really like, uh, the root enhancers that are uh, voodoo juice, piranha, and tarantula. They're all from advanced nutrients. Those three alone, man, uh, the, alone do root growth expansion. It, they, they basically make your roots 10 times fast. They grow 10 times faster, basically, minimum. So it's just just learning, and I just hope that you guys enjoy. Also, I want to throw out there, do not forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. We will keep putting out shows during the UFC hiatus because all of you deserve the content and we are here to give it to you. Also, we have our entire show as well as clips on our YouTube channel, Bite Size Tastes of the Show for quick content. We will be right back here next week. We are covering Tough Six. Watch the event. Get some inside info from Mike. Let's roll.